Hi and welcome back. In this tutorial I will explain how to create user interfaces that will look proper even if the screen's aspect ratio or resolution changes. I'll also cover scripting. Well, let's get started. I'm gonna open example 1 that comes with NGUI. In this example there's an explanation on how anchors work and you should already be familiar with anchors from one of the previous video tutorials. But just to quickly recap, anchors specified on widgets let you basically attach things to sides of the screen, corners of the screen, or even other widgets, or even 3D game objects for that matter. Simply enable anchoring and then choose which sides get attached to what and what kind of offset you're going to have. Or just position the widget and then drag it around the values will update automatically. Now if you happen to resize the screen everything will remain exactly where you've placed it. Top left will be in the top left, top will be up top, top right will be in the top right corner and so on and so forth. What I haven't mentioned yet is the UI root. UI root scales itself based on the screen size as well as the scaling style that you specify. If it is set to pixel perfect, this means that uh, if you place a 200 pixel by 300 pixel widget into your screen, it is going to be exact dimensions on the screen in pixels. And it is fantastic if you want to have crisp looking user interfaces. However, there is a pretty big difference between building for an iPhone 3 and building for an iPad 4. Fortunately, NGUI has a very simple way of addressing that. Simply change the UI root scaling style to be fixed size. What this essentially means is it really doesn't matter what the screen size is going to be. NGUI will treat it as the same exact size. So if you have a smaller resolution, the UI will simply look proportionally smaller. If you have a larger resolution, the UI will look proportionally larger. If you happen to have a window that takes two-thirds of the screen on uh, an iPad, it'll still take two-thirds of the screen on older iPhone. And this is obviously quite convenient when designing user interfaces. It'll save you a lot of time. Just don't forget to anchor things to left and right sides of the screen as necessary. And GUI actually comes with a built-in localization system that you can take advantage of both through scripts and through the inspector. Simply attach the localized script to either a label or a sprite and here you will be able to specify a key. So for example as I start typing language you will notice that the language actually pops up right here. Now I can actually click on it and get a preview of what it looks like with Francais and with English. This label will be automatically localized now. But if you want to know more, just look at the localization example that comes with Langui. Example 10. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the Atlas Maker and the Font Maker tools that come with Langui. Atlas Maker lets you create atlases, as I mentioned in the previous video, and the Font Maker lets you create bitmap fonts. So, for example, if I have this sprite right here that I want to add to an atlas in order to draw on the screen, I would use the Atlas Maker. Now, of course, I could simply add a texture by using right click, create, simple texture. And now for this texture, I can actually specify that BSG texture that I have referenced up here. And it will show up, and it's all fine. But the problem is the number of draw calls will go up. Now I currently have three draw calls because of it. If I disable it, it goes back to one draw call. Not exactly ideal. Reason for it being three instead of two is because Angui needs to split up the geometry in order to accommodate for the order of sprites that you're currently drawing. So first it has to draw the background, then it has to draw the PSG sprite, and late last it has to draw the label that's on top of it. Thus, three draw calls. However, if we were to make this be a part of an atlas, it wouldn't have to be creating an extra draw call. There are two ways of adding something to an atlas. 
First way is just select the texture in the project view, switch to the Atlas Maker, make sure that the Atlas is selected, and click the Add or Update button. The second way is to select it in the scene view, if you happen to have a UI texture there. Either way, you should see the texture that you're trying to add show up right here at the bottom. Click the Add or Update button, and the Atlas will now have this texture. If you happen to go down the second way, you might also notice that the UI texture was replaced with a UI sprite. Hit the play button to make sure that everything refreshes and you will now see your sprite in the scene. Likewise, the number of draw calls is now down to 1 instead of 3 because the sprite is now a part of the atlas. Adding new fonts to the atlas is equally easy. Just open up the font maker tool specify what source you want to use. For example, in this case I want to add the Batman font. Then specify what characters you want included. Here I happen to have a lot of characters here including Russian letters which probably don't even exist in this font. So I'm just gonna stick to regular ASCII here. Of course the less characters you choose to be added to the font the smaller it's going to be but likewise the less characters is going to be capable of displaying. So let's stick to ASCII and for the size I'm going to choose size 40. I'm going to be adding it to the wooden atlas and now I'll just hit the create font and specify how it is going to be named. I will call it Batman. Hit OK and the new font is now going to be there. Now that the font is actually uh, added to the atlas I can use Alt Shift L shortcut to create a new label or do it through the NGUI menu. This automatically adds it to uh, the current scene and of course I can tweak it a bit. To tweak it just go back to the font and you have all these options here. You can add a shadow, soft outline and a couple of other options. So for example if I wanted to add a shadow effect and I wanted uh, the shadow to be black but also semi-transparent I would do it like so. Add a shadow and you can immediately see the shadow appear. You can add another shadow and just make it thicker overall or create an outline giving it somewhat of a darker glow around it. And now it, the f letters are actually really well defined. At the time of this a tutorial is recording, there's currently no undo functionality for any of these modifications, but it is a planned feature for one of the feature updates. If at later time you decide that you no longer want some sprite in the atlas, you can just delete it from the atlas maker, or just by opening up a sprite viewer window, finding whatever it is you want to delete, like the font that I just added, and deleting it through here. Now all of it is gone. Okay, let's talk a little bit about scripting now. In a previous tutorial I briefly showed this script where I had raw events coming in on hover, on press, on click and so on and so forth. What it did not explain is where they're coming from. Now they actually are coming from UI camera and if you open up UI camera you will be able to see all of the events that NGUI sends out. Likewise, you can simply go to the UI camera itself, right-click on it, and choose Help. This will take you to a documentation page on the UI camera, and it will give you an explanation of all the events that are sent out by NGUI, as well as a brief overview of how to use them. So everything in NGUI is ultimately driven from an event sent by UI camera. All of these events on hover, on press, on click are sent out to a, a collider that is in front of a raycast performed by the camera. Even the, the scripts we used before, like a button for example, they also rely on such events. Here's the on click for example, same as you see here. So the button script gets the on click event and then inside of it, it will execute the event delegates which is what uh, we were subscribing to earlier in the tutorials. 
So if at any point you decide to create a new component that needs to listen to these events, just go to the documentation page for the UI camera and implement one of these functions. I tried my best to keep that documentation of my scripts as easy to understand as possible. So if you were to navigate to a sprite, for example, you will see that there are plenty of comments everywhere. So if you are a developer, you're probably going to find a pretty easy time when it comes to trying to figure out what's going on. To change the sprite, for example, you would get the component of type sprite and change its sprite name. Here I'm doing it on click, which means that if I happen to hit play and click on this object, it'll change its sprite because I have the test script attached right now. If I wanted to trigger a tween dynamically through a script, I don't even have to attach it to a, the object here. All I have to do is call the begin statement. So tween rotation begin, for example, but there's also tween position begin, tween alpha begin, and so on and so forth. I'm specifying the object that I will be working with, which is just this game object, the duration of how long it's going to take, and the final rotation in this case. I don't even have to specify the from value because the from value is just going to be assumed to be the current value. So now if I actually go here and hit play and click on the smiley, it'll turn around. Every tweener begin statement actually returns an instance of the class to work with. So here I retrieve the tween object and then I add an unfinished delegate. So similar to how we were specifying the unfinished in the inspector before, you can actually do it through code quite easily. Event delegate add, specify what it is you're adding to, the tween's unfinished statement, and then the callback that you want to call. In this case, once the tween finishes, this callback will be called, which will play the tween in reverse, basically. Let's try it. Hit play, click on the object, there we go. Of course, if you're a professional user who is quite familiar with C Sharp, you can actually specify delegates anonymously like so, so you don't actually have to create any additional functions. Naturally, I think this is less readable than it was before, but it's really up to you. Well, okay, I think that's about it for this tutorial. I'm likely going to explore scripting in greater detail at some other time, but for the time being, I think you should have a pretty good understanding of how things work and how to find your way around. If you ever get stuck, remember, NGUI, help. This will take you to the documentation page for NGUI, which is updated with all kinds of useful links. Likewise, you can navigate to uh, the support forum right here and ask your questions here. Well, until next time, thanks for watching.